What is up everyone? My name is Chris and today I'm going to be showcasing my um, Python cryptocurrency trading automation program. Um, now that being said, if you want to skip around this video, I'm going to be including a timeline in the description below. So if you just want to skip to the results of this program, feel free to do that. Now that being said, I'm going to start out by simply explaining my lines of code and some of the intuition that went into it. Now after that, we're going to be talking about the results of this program and how exactly it did in terms of trying to get me some moolah. So stay tuned for that, but let's talk about the program. So first, we start out by importing, um, importing a bunch of libraries, most importantly the Binance client because we're going to be using Binance's API for our data gathered today. Because of uh, Binance's unique platform, they have two keys, a regular key and then a secret key. So we read in both of those keys to log into the client. Uh, now, after we log into the client, we can then gather data. But first, we still have a question that we haven't answered, which is how will we trade? And the answer? Momentum. Now, what exactly it means to trade via momentum is simply trying to, um, we're basically trying to trade assets, uh, locate assets that are uptrending, that are appreciating in value, that are on the upswing. So if we are able to identify winners, so essentially these appreciating assets, then those are the ones that have momentum and those are the ones that we're going to try and buy, that we're going to try and trade on Binance. That being said, let's take a look at Binance's data set. So uh, here are the lines of code, essentially um, creating a data frame, looping through the tickers, and then um, storing whatever values I think are going to be important. And this is the, the head. So uh, here are the uh, various data fields. We have symbol, current price, volume, 24 hour percentage change, high price, low price. Um, yeah, I feel like all this is pretty, pretty intuitive, pretty standard. Next, we're gonna be gathering data for momentum trading. So we import this time client. Uh, you'll, you'll see why in a second. Um, but essentially what we're doing here is uh, we define a variable total checks and time between checks. Total checks is the amount of times that we're going to be checking the market, essentially the amount of times that we're going to be accessing Binance's uh, client. Um, now the time between check is essentially how much in seconds time in between each market, market check. So if we have five market checks and five seconds in between each market check, that's five times five seconds. So this program would approximately take 25 seconds to execute based off of those numbers. Now you can change these numbers to whatever you want. You can do 10, you can do 50, you can do 100, you can do 1,000. Just know it'll take longer the higher the number that you add. However, the higher number that you, you uh, replace in place of these fives, the more uh, verifiable your results are going to be. It's, so in summary, it's going to take longer, but the more almost... Um, trustworthy that your results will be in the end. So do it that way you may. So uh, these are the, the five market checks for each asset. Now again, these are just trying to capture the current price at various moments. Each of these are five seconds apart. Um, so start from finish, like I said, 25 seconds. Now we're going to be visualizing what exactly I mean when I say uh, momentum trading. So now that we have gathered this data, let's try and do uh, some calculations. So first, percentage change. We're just trying to see, we're trying to create a data field for, again, figuring out what are the winners, what are the assets that are appreciating, increasing in value. So after we create this field, we're going to put it on our data frame. Um, and here's where we actually filter. Essentially, we're only going to be looking at assets that have a percentage change value that is greater than zero. So this means that they are increasing in value inherently. Um, so here is where we actually 
uh, visualize it using Seaborn and some uh, some distribution plots. So here is the entire market that we gathered within that span of 25 seconds. Um, these are the percentage change values. Now, when you see 0 0.003, that really means 3% because you have to convert the decimal to the percent, so 3%. Um, but essentially what we're doing with this line of code is we cut this graph in half. We're no longer looking at these assets that are losing their value. Instead, only assets that are increasing in value. So that's the idea of momentum trading, trying to cut that distribution in half. Now, in terms of formulating a strategy, here's my theory. Now, we're going to try, because I don't have the patience, to do a short-term trading strategy, which is inherently risky. However, what an ETF is, is an asset basket. Essentially, it combines a lot of different assets into a single uh, share of an ETF. So in an ETF, there could be you know hundreds of various um, assets in it. And because you're not stock picking, but instead diversifying into a broader uh, scope of the market, there's less risk. Now, I'm not going to be doing hundreds of different investments in every asset basket, but maybe like five cryptocurrencies per asset basket, something like that. Now, the idea is short term is risky, but an asset basket is less risky. So those two things should theoretically um, equal out the risk. Now, with momentum trading, we're only looking at the positive values. And with cryptocurrency, it's very volatile. So all of these things added together in this um, very abstract theory is essentially saying we can neutralize the risk by combining short term with the asset with the asset basket. Sorry, and that should theoretically allow us to capitalize on the upswing of cryptocurrencies' natural volatility because we're identifying uh, assets with momentum. So that is the theory that might not have made sense. I might have misexplained that. It is what it is, but hopefully you'll understand what, what exactly I mean in a second. So to put this into action, let's filter out the momentum data frame. I use the quantile function inherent with pandas data frame right here. So I'm only looking at the top 2% of the uh, self-identified momentous uh, market, which only comes out to be, like I said, only a handful, maybe up to five uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, so this, this is very useful in identifying my asset basket. But next, we need to calculate individual investments. And that's what we do right here. We divide our percentage change um, by the sum of the percentage change and times the total investment. This is how I weight each indiv individual investment. Investments with a higher percentage change will have more investment allocated to them. That's essentially what this is doing. Next, we uh, append that to the data frame. And I'm not doing this just because uh, it'd be kind of a hassle. But if you, if you wanted to turn this into actual investing, all you would do is simply uh, go right here, make this code, and run this. You would just run this part. But because I don't want to invest actual money right now, I'm keeping this as markdown, which is essentially just text in Jupyter Notebook. This isn't actually code. But if you want it to be code that actually runs, like I said, just do that. Cl click uh, code on cell type. Um, very easy. Um, but next, we're going to be gathering data for evaluation, essentially trying to uh, gather data to see how our investments did. So that's what we do right here. Um, we append the result data to our data frame. We then calculate percentage change um, in terms of its value, um, append that, and then we evaluate. So this is the plot that I made, or at least the code for the plot, and this is the actual plot itself. Now keep in mind, this is only one 25 second run, <clears throat> but here are the various assets. Um, and these are, this should not be dollars return. This should be percentage uh, percentage change because these aren't dollar amounts. 
these are saying how much they uh, appreciated or depreciated. So this one, for example, Hive BTC, it grew during the time of me holding it through this uh, program's automation. It grew about 1.5% um, um, in value. Whereas TRX PAX decreased by, uh, looks like, 3.25% in value. So it is what it is. These, uh, obviously, there's no surefire strategy. But also keep in mind, this is only one 25-second interval of testing. The market is open 24, sec or 24 hours a day, which is really 24 hours into seconds. 864, okay. So if I did uh, 864... Okay, point zero two. So I only gather data for point zero two percent of an entire day. So this is definitely not enough data to judge uh, the validity of my of my strategy quite yet. So I created a program to combine all of this on the next Jupiter. So let's do that. Now this program, <clears throat> this program right here. Um, is very similar to this, except it is less documented and instead everything is kind of um, wrapped around this uh, batch while loop that will run basically all of this whatever amount of times that you want. So for, uh, just to make things easy, I had this run five times. So three market checks, three seconds in between each market check, um, five rounds of testing. So that would be nine times five, about 45 seconds uh, times two, which is going to be 90 seconds times, uh, nine, sorry, 90 seconds long in terms of runtime. So that's what we got going on. Um, we, we wrapped all this again in that, in that uh, batch while loop. And this is, uh, letting us know that it ran correctly. And again, I didn't include the actual, the thing that I pointed out here, I didn't include the actual uh, purchasing on Binance's client because I didn't want to use money. But if you did want to purchase, just import this code right here. And additionally, if you even wanted to do test trades, Binance has that feature. They have a place test order and this is the, uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Right here. If you want to do a test order, you can just use this code right here. Um, I, I was just doing a market order. Um, so let's see how it did. These are the, I, I again, I didn't run it for that long, only 90 seconds. So this still isn't representative, but at least gives us something. Um, so these are the various percentage change values. We ran it uh, five batches. Each color is indicative of a different round of that batch. So each round kind of did not too good besides the tail end of the fifth round. So it looks like we probably lost money. Um, these are the percentage change values and this is the dollars returned. Um, so I didn't do any risk adjustion or uh, adjusting calculations in terms of the you know the, the treasury rate and whatnot, um, but in terms of making this customizable for you guys, you know the user, you can change the strategy for however you you want. If you wanted to do more assets per asset basket, because look, I have one two, one two three, one two three, one two three, one two three four five. There's about uh, two to five assets per basket, but if you wanted to do more, all you would have to do is, uh, let's see, where, where did it go? Do this quantile, do uh, something like, if you did 9.90, that would probably increase it to about, um, uh, probably like 25 assets per basket. If you did something like 50, a couple hundred assets per basket. So you, you can customize this. You can also uh, change these things. Um, notice how right here I actually have, so we'll say 
you know, 10 market checks, um, 20 seconds in between market checks, 30 rounds of testing. Now the program will run for a decent amount of time, but all this to show that the program is customizable for how you want to do it. Um, additionally, you can test out various strategies and see how they do. I didn't do the most thorough analysis in terms of evaluating strategies, but I could um, I could create additional videos to help with some of that. I just honestly wanted to give people more of a starting point for how to approach trading automation and ways that you can make it unique for you as the user. And ultimately, just trying to you know spread the love of crypto, spread the love of data, spread the love of API. These things are really cool. These things are the future. I love talking about them. I love making videos about them. So if you guys have any questions, if you have any ideas for further videos, let me know. I'm a very easygoing guy. Um, I, like I said, I like to do these things, so I'm, I'm, I'm eager. Uh, that being said, uh, hopefully you learned something. If not, it's perfectly okay. I'll get you next time. Um, but have a great day, and thank you for watching.